Okay, so the next item on our agenda is the adoption of the REVPs report. So I will now ask alternate REVP, Sister Chantal Fortin, to take the chair while I present my report. Merci, Alex. J'espère que tout le monde m'entend bien. Oui. Parfait. Alors, à ce moment-là, je te cède la parole de nouveau pour présenter ton rapport. Bonsoir. Consoeurs, confrères, camarades, sisters, brothers, friends, au cours de la période couverte par ce rapport, notre région a réalisé des gains inédits en matière de négociation. Qu'il s'agisse d'un nouveau libellé concernant les congés familiaux pour prestations de soins, les congés pour violences conjugales ou les comités mixtes chargés de mener des études sur la santé mentale, notre syndicat continue de réclamer du soutien emprunt de compassion qui tient compte des nombreux défis auxquels les membres sont confrontés. Nous avons obtenu des augmentations salariales équitables et progressé dans des enjeux de disparité salariale. Nous avons obtenu des allocations et des augmentations spécifiques à certains groupes, apporté des améliorations aux primes de corps et avons réalisé plusieurs améliorations clés pour nos conventions collectives. Les membres de la région se sont mobilisés pour soutenir les négociations du Conseil du Trésor et des agences par le biais de campagnes de courriels, d'appels aux députés, de lobbying, d'affichage, d'actions de distribution de lettres, d'actions de sensibilisation devant les lieux de travail, des piquets d'information et bien sûr des manifs. Nous avons continué à maintenir la pression sur l'employeur alors que nous nous dirigeons vers des votes de grève historiques, incluant notre unité ARC, les unités PA, TC, SV et EB, et d'autres unités qui auraient potentiellement joint par la suite. En 2020, nous étions sur le point de, dé de déclencher une grève générale de l'AFPC qui aurait même pu rivaliser la grève générale de 1991. En février 2020, les membres du SEI ont commencé à tenir des votes de grève d'un bout à l'autre du pays. Les dirigeants et dirigeantes des sections locales de la RCN ont fait un excellent travail pour mobiliser leurs membres sur la question d'une grève. Mais fin février, la COVID-19 a fait son apparition au pays nous avons été obligés de reporter indéfiniment les séances de vote de grève et toutes les activités syndicales en personne. Les membres de la FPC se sont, se sont rapidement adaptés pour s'attaquer à la crise de santé mondiale et fournir à la population canadienne, ici et, et en dehors du pays, les services publics ainsi qu'un soutien urgent. Nous avons assuré la sécurité de la population canadienne et avons rempli notre devoir dans une démonstration de dévouement sans précédent à l'égard du public que nous servons. Dans le cadre des négociations, notre syndicat a aussi dû pivoter. Nous avons poussé l'employeur à revenir à la table et faire avancer les choses dans les négociations avec le Conseil du Trésor, l'Agence du revenu, l'Agence canadienne d'inspection des aliments et Parc Canada. Les membres de l'AFPC RCN ont participé à des actions en ligne pour faire pression sur l'employeur et nous avons trouvé des moyens créatifs de faire pression sur les députés de la région. Pour la première action à distanciation sociale de notre région, le Conseil régional d'action politique de l'Outaouais a organisé une action de distribution d'affiches et de lettres au bureau du député Stéphane Lauzon à Buckingham pour exiger qu'il appuie la demande de l'AFPC de retourner à la table pour négocier une convention équitable. Once Treasury Board and agency groups reached tentative agreements, our region held over 70 online ratification sessions, another first for our union. Thousands of members participated in these virtual sessions and cast ballots while navigating a new online system with the incredible support from regional office staff. Our fight continues in bargaining, and we continue to put pressure on the Canada Border Services Agency through online actions and mobilizations from CIU members in support of the FB bargaining team. This employer has repeatedly delayed talks and fails to acknowledge the dedication of border services officers and non-uniform CBSA workers to keeping Canadians and our border crossings safe. These workers deserve a fair contract. In October 2020, the NCR hosted PSAC's first ever virtual bargaining conference where members elected a strong UCTE bargaining team for negotiations with NAV Canada. During the pandemic, our union has had to diversify our tactics and develop online campaign strategies to complement the on-the-ground organizing efforts of members. For bargaining at Université du Québec en Outaouais, 
This meant setting up an online action that targets decision makers and calls on them to show student workers fairness. To support bargaining at the Communication Security Establishment and the Office of the Auditor General, members came up with creative ways of showing their support for the bargaining team, including the use of virtual backgrounds during meetings, email signature block messages supporting bargaining, email campaigns, and petitions to the employer. Of course, online actions are complementary to and can never fully substitute in-person mobilizations, but it's an important way of asking members to show support for their bargaining team and to build solidarity amongst members. As we hit impasse with CSE, members of UNDE 70654 voted for a strike mandate for the very first time in the unit's history. This presented another challenge, how to escalate pressure on the employer during a pandemic. What's safe? What's strategic? How do we show our strength when there are caps on outdoor gatherings? Members organized weekly information pickets maintaining COVID safety guidelines while passing out bargaining update leaflets to members on their way to work. They have now reached a tentative agreement and I want to congratulate the local for their perseverance and courage in these challenging times. We're also still facing an uphill battle at the bargaining table for PSAC members at Salvation Army Ottawa Booth Center where members of DCL 73100 provide essential services to our city's most vulnerable people. The employer refuses to provide these workers with fair wage increases, which has resulted in an impasse. And it's just not how you treat the frontline heroes of this pandemic. We have several other regional bargaining units at various stages of bargaining. We are sending the bargaining teams and members mobilizing on the ground our support and solidarity. I think all of us can't wait for the day when we can finally put the Phoenix fiasco behind us and no longer need to reserve entire sections of reports on the government of Canada's inability to properly pay workers in the federal public service. Unfortunately, five years later, they're now even Phoenixing Phoenix damages. PSAC negotiated the best Phoenix damages agreement in the federal public service. Our union carefully worded the agreement to reflect a wide range of impacts suffered by PSAC members, including for stress, aggravation, pain and suffering, and for the late implementation of collective agreements. There is a strong precedent of damages for those purposes being deemed non-taxable by the CRA. But Treasury Board is clearly frustrated that we negotiated a lump sum compensation deal, and it seems like they're now trying to sabotage attempts to get a positive tax ruling. So here's the thing. The CRA agreed to review whether Phoenix damages should be taxable if Treasury Board signed an agreement recognizing that, dam that the damages were to be paid to members for pain and suffering, which is what's written in the contract we signed. The government is refusing to cooperate, so we're now exploring every legal option available to remedy this situation, and members are invited to take action by sending a letter to Minister Duclo and calling their MPs. PSAC members didn't fight like hell for five years just to be disrespected at the end of a process where we thought we had finally come to an agreement. On the third anniversary of Phoenix in 2019, the cold didn't stop us from shutting down the Ottawa Corps with hundreds of members marching in the streets to the Prime Minister's office. And on the fourth anniversary of Phoenix, we returned to the PMO to hold a press conference to demand that the government make this right. It almost looked like the fifth anniversary of Phoenix was going to come and go without any fuss because we believed that we were finally getting somewhere with the damages settlement. When the news came that the government was moving ahead on processing taxed Phoenix damages, NCR members knew it was time to take action. On February 28th, with very short notice, members took part in a rapid response letter delivery blitz to every Liberal MP in the NCR. Members delivered letters and posted signs on MPs' offices took photos of their action, and then we posted the images on social media to continue to push the click-to-call digital action that connected, that connected members with their MPs by phone. Hundreds of phone calls were made that day due to these efforts, and I want to thank everyone who answered the call, made the call, and participated in that mobilization. It's also important to note that there are still many PSAC members who do not yet have damages agreement for the Phoenix Pay system. Members who work on Parliament Hill face a protracted fight to get any kind of Phoenix damages agreement, so we must show them, so we must show these members our solidarity in their fight for fair compensation in the days to come. After five years of stress, 
financial uncertainty and psychological harm that PSAC members have suffered under Phoenix, we are committed to fight until all pay issues are resolved and until members, former members, and retirees are paid the full damages amount that they are owed. Though this fight has been long, frustrating, and demoralizing, our collective struggle against Phoenix will be woven into the great history of our union as an example of perseverance and solidarity as we raise the rallying cry, we are all affected. Over the last year, we've witnessed a cultural shift regarding systemic racism and oppression. This is a fight our union must engage in, and it's a struggle that calls on all of us to be leaders in this moment to uphold the values of solidarity that our movement is founded on. We must take action on racism in the workplace, within our own structures, and in our communities. The PSAC NCR Racially Visible Action Committee issued an important call in June 2020 asking union leadership to address racism and discrimination. It's a call we must answer. This call from our VAC led to a roundtable listening session with PSAC National President Chris Aylward, National Executive Vice President Sharon D'Souza, and myself as the REVP. In the NCR, I've committed to meaningful and proactive consultation on anti-racism anti issues with members of RVAC and the Indigenous Action Circle, as well as consultations on equity issues with the Pride Committee, Members with Disabilities Action Committee, Ottawa Regional Women's Committee, and the Comité Régional des Femmes Francophones. PSAC is committed to taking steps to combat racism and oppression. We've developed an anti-racism action plan, which was just recently adopted by the AEC, and through our education program, we will provide anti-racism education and tools for stewards to assist members facing discrimination in the workplace. PSAC NCR is also set to host a national webinar on systemic racism on May 26th in English and on May 27th in French. The webinar will feature panelists talking about their experiences of racism in the labor movement. There's still so much work to be done, but I believe that together, we can create real change and build more inclusive movements. This work will require a profound self-reflection, an acknowledgement of the different ways the systems of colonial oppression are upheld. But we must take action with an intersectional approach to dismantling systems of oppression in order to root out systemic racism and discrimination. An injury to one is an injury to all. La solidarité est la pierre angulaire de notre mouvement. Si nous levons la barre pour l'ensemble des travailleurs et travailleuses grâce aux gains réalisés dans le cadre de nos négociations, nous avons aussi un pouvoir immense lorsque nous travaillons ensemble en solidarité pour remporter des victoires avec nos alliés et camarades. Que nous travaillons avec la Fédération du travail de l'Ontario, que nous nous mobilisons contre les attaques de Ford, contre l'éducation, les droits des travailleurs, les droits des migrants, les droits des personnes handicapées et les droits des francophones, ou que nous nous joignons aux actions nationales de la journée de lobbying du CTC sur l'assurance médicaments. Le mouvement syndical, dans son ensemble, a une immense puissance lorsque nous sommes unis. Les membres de l'AFPC RCN se sont aussi joints à la délégation du Conseil du travail d'Ottawa dans un autobus à destination Niagara en février 2020 pour se joindre à une manifestation de la FTO au Congrès conservateur de l'Ontario. Nous nous sommes joints aux délégations de l'AFPC Ontario, de, Ni de Niagara, London, Kingston et Toronto pour montrer notre solidarité avec le mouvement syndical en Ontario. En octobre 2020, lorsque le personnel de soutien à l'Université d'Ottawa était en grève au milieu d'une pandémie, le Conseil de la RCN et le Conseil régional d'Ottawa se sont montrés solidaires en visitant la ligne de piquetage et en contribuant au fonds de grève. Alors que les expressions de solidarité sont devenues de plus en plus virtuelles pendant la pandémie, les membres ont participé à des actions de zap téléphonique et des rassemblements virtuels organisés par 15 in Fairness et Acorn. Notre région a joué un rôle actif dans l'organisation de la journée d'action 10 pour 10, le jour, de, le jour de deuil de cette année, qui encourageait les membres à prendre 10 minutes pour demander 10 jours de congés de maladie payés. 
Nous avons aussi participé à des actions d'installation d'enseignes ciblant les députés conservateurs de la région d'Ottawa le 1er mai. Solidarity also means community. As a region, we are prioritizing building relationships with community allies and joining in their struggle for justice. We've supported Ottawa ACORN in their actions and campaigns for housing rights, tenant rights, and disability rights, including the October 28, 2020 rally against demo eviction of Manor Village residents. Our region also contributed to a fundraiser for the family of Joyce Eshaquan, an indigenous woman who died in hospital while being subject to racist comments. Members also attended the July 22, 2020 Justice Pulse Joyce Vigil. And in September and October 2020, I visited the Moose Moratorium blockades in Avera du Parc to bring support and solidarity from PSAC NCR and the Indigenous Action Circle to contribute to the fund and to provide essential materials to the Algonquin Anishinaabe land defenders protecting the uh, moose population in the area. Solidarity with indigenous people must be a priority for our region. During the pandemic, when Treasure Board took away Code 699 leave for members who were using it to deal with school closures and daycare shutdowns, we knew that the childcare crisis was escalating and we needed to find allies in the community to mount a united front. NCR Council and the Young Workers Committee joined forces with Child Care Now Ottawa and organized a series of action and lobby meetings with key MPs in the region. We lobbied MPs over important issues like the shutdown of Tunney's daycare, immediate supports for child care centers, and the restoration of 699 leave. Because the pandemic is not the time to take away child care options. We held a virtual lobby action outside Liberal MP Marie-France Lalonde's office and later that evening met with Hull Elmer MP Greg Fergus to call on him in his role as Parliamentary Secretary to the, president, to the President of Treasury Board to restore access to 699 leave for child care. We also held actions at MP Catherine McKenna's office and MP Mona Fautzi's office. These efforts, along with other actions, ultimately led to the reopening of the Tunney's Daycare, one of Ottawa's few bilingual daycare centers. We're still calling on Treasury Board to reverse their discriminatory policy change on Code 699 leave for childcare, with policy grievance hearings soon approaching, and any and all members being denied 699 leave are encouraged to file a grievance so that we have documentation for that policy grievance. Sometimes solidarity means supporting causes with our time and resources. Sometimes solidarity means identifying a common front and working together to push for change. But solidarity always means community. La RCN a participé à des campagnes nationales de lutte contre la privatisation, telles que la campagne AFPC UEDN exposer les coûts à la défense nationale. Ces campagnes ont été lancées pendant la pandémie et ont jusqu'à présent consisté d'une conférence de presse virtuelle où j'ai agi en tant que porte-parole francophone. On a organisé des webinaires régionaux dans la de la promotion des outils d'action en ligne. Et notre travail contre la privatisation se poursuit avec une campagne contre la sous-traitance des centres d'appel de l'Agence du revenu. Notre campagne régionale pour un lieu de travail sain aux terrasses de la Chaudière a permis de réaliser des progrès significants. Le vice-président exécutif national du SEN confrère Andrew Shaver et moi-même continuons à rencontrer régulièrement le sous-ministre adjoint au SPAC, Stéphane Derry. Les discussions ont été positives, il y a eu une, communi une communication continue ainsi que des mises à jour sur le travail effectué pour moderniser les terrasses et créer un environnement de travail plus sain. La RCN a aussi participé à la campagne « Nationalisons Rivera »,« Make Rivera Public », qui demande au gouvernement de faire en sorte que les établissements de soins de longue durée privés à but lucratif deviennent des propriétés publiques. En tant que VPER, j'ai participé à un panel organisé par Free Transit Ottawa pour parler de la campagne. Depuis que la pandémie a tout déplacé en ligne, l'équipe de l'éducation de l'AFPC s'est commis à modifier notre programme d'éducation pour qu'il soit dispensé au moyen de, mo de modules virtuels et d'apprentissage en ligne. Nous encourageons les membres 
à profiter de la nouvelle formation en ligne disponible sur le site web national de l'AFPC. Et avec le lancement de l'ABC du syndicat virtuel au printemps 2021, nous attendons maintenant avec impatience le lancement du cours de traitement des griefs. Au niveau régional, nous avons organisé plusieurs webinaires sur le retour, de, le retour au travail, l'utilisation du congé spécial 699, l'organisation virtuelle et la violence sur le lieu de travail. Nous avons aussi offert des formations virtuelles sur la grève et des formations spécialisées pour répondre aux besoins spécifiques des sections locales. J'aimerais aussi souligner le travail de notre consoeur Chantal Fortin, qui, à titre de présidente du comité d'éducation et de VPER suppléante, a pris l'initiative d'élaborer un programme de mentorat AFPC-RCN. Au niveau national, je suis assigné au portfolio de négociation de NAV Canada et de Parc Canada, le portfolio de jeunes travailleuses et travailleurs en collaboration avec le confrère Jamie Mills, VPER AFPC-CB, et avec le confrère Yvon Barrière, VPER AFPC-Québec, je co-préside aussi le portfolio des sections locales à charte directe et le portfolio des langues officielles. times ahead will be challenging. The pandemic has changed the nature of our work and brought with it challenges to our mental health. We're facing a crisis at the political, social, and, eco and economic level that our generation has never seen before. Gaps and, in it, gaps and inequities in our society have been laid bare. We are obligated to reckon with the systemic racism that exists in our society and the oppression that is experienced by so many communities. The holes in our social safety net are causing suffering and harm to workers. We're seeing a rise in anti-worker legislation and hate speech rhetoric. We must tackle these injustices head on, root out discrimination and colonial oppression in our structures and work to create a more just world for all. This moment calls on us to be leaders as members of the Public Service Alliance of Canada. We are faced with challenges we don't have the solutions for and questions we don't have the answers to. But we are the ones who will find those solutions. We are the ones who will find the path forward. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Our union will have to adapt We will need to show creativity, innovation, and passion to bring our movement forward. We will need to show grit and determination in facing the fights ahead. We will need to refocus the labor movement on its true strength, its people. We will need to engage with members on the ground to build capacity and unity in our movement to meet the challenges of our time. But be not discouraged in the face of these challenges before us, brothers, sisters, comrades, consoeurs, confrères, camarades. Be hopeful, be purposeful, willful, and determined. Because united, we, the workers, have the power. L'union fait la force. Solidarité. Solidarity. Merci tout le monde.